Hello. My name is Tracy Gray, and I'm delighted to be here with you. It looks like we've all had a few technology challenges today. I always say that this is one of the reasons why teachers are often reluctant to use technology, because it's never as easy as it seems to be. I'm also here today with my wonderful colleagues, Kristen Rudell, who is going to be talking to us from the other Washington, as we say, Washington State, and Judith Zorfis. Judy's coming in from Boston, and she's going to be joining us in just a minute. And we also are being powered by Caroline Martin, who is going to be doing the slides for us. So why don't we get started here with our Reinventing the Classroom discussion, Drive Your Own Professional Development. And what we're going to be doing is laying out some different ideas and different ways that you can help your colleagues, and also, if you're a teacher, help yourself to personalize your professional development to meet your needs. So as you can see here on the screen, uh, we're going to quickly review the purpose of the session. We're going to be talking about Power Up What Works, our website that we've been working on for the last three years. Uh, we're going to give you a tour of Power Up, and we're going to show you how you can actually customize and personalize your professional development. We're going to have some time today to discuss uh, ways that you might go about doing this, and also we're going to focus on next steps. So the purpose of our session today is to really drill down on Power Up What Works, and to figure out ways, and since we've got a small group today, hopefully we'll be able to exchange ideas using the chat function, and we'll be able to identify next steps and see how we here at Power Up might be able to help you. Uh, there's a question here that asks, is Power Up an acronym? Uh, it is not the full title of our website is Power Up What Works, and so uh, we're going to be uh, giving you uh, just a quick tour. We have been funded by the U.S. Department of Education Office of Special Education Programs to put together this free website that offers resources and tools and materials and gives really state-of-the-art ideas about how you can leverage your technology dollars and make it work for your teachers to enhance their instruction and for your students to enhance their learning. Over the past four years, we've worked with over 15 school districts to get their input to ensure that the tools and resources that we've developed on Power Up really can meet your needs. So let's just take a minute to look at Power Up What Works. The goal is to ensure that students with disabilities and their classmates, particularly struggling students, are college and career ready. When you look at the resources on our site, what you'll see is we've worked to connect evidence-based practices, technology, universal design for learning, and differentiated instruction to show how these areas connect and how you can use technology to enhance your teaching. The three key components of Power Up What Works are resources for your classroom, resources for your professional development, and resources for your school-wide technology implementation. So what we're going to do now is go and take a quick tour of Power Up What Works. So here we go. Uh, we're going to take you to the site. 
and we're going to show you some of the key features. Bear with us a moment, and there we have Power Up What Works. One of the key elements of Power Up is that we have focused on addressing the needs of teachers, professional development coordinators, teacher educators, those individuals who are working with pre-service teachers, and also administrators and school leaders to really understand how technology can be integrated effectively in the classroom and how technology can be implemented throughout the school to meet the needs of all learners. What we're seeing here as the screen continues to scroll, I think what's happening is that our slider is in fact continuing to move. So what we're going to do is jump right into our instructional strategy guide. Caroline, why don't we go there and we can stop that scrolling. So what you'll see when you go to this section of the website is that we have focused on two key areas, English language arts and math. The justification for starting with these two areas is that we've heard from teachers around the country that there's a great interest in understanding how the Common Core State Standards and other state standards that are being developed will affect how we teach English language arts and math in our classroom. So if you go down just a little bit here, when we scroll down the page, what you'll see is in each one of our 19 instructional strategy guides, we have five key sections. The first one is Teach with Text, which allows the user to get information on best practices and ways to use technology to personalize instruction for struggling students. We then have a whole section where we offer lessons and action. And these are real life stories, if you will, that offer examples about what teachers have done to bring technology alive in the classroom to support these particular strategies. We've got quick views, which are videos that offer a snapshot on how you can expand your knowledge on the particular area. We've got a Tech Matters blog, which offers grab and grow resources for our users, uh, ideas that you can use today in your classroom, or if you're offering professional development. These are ideas and ways that technology can enhance instruction, and also ideas for how administrators and school leaders and think about those key issues related to technology. And finally, we offer professional development support materials, which provide step-by-step -step ways that those who are developing professional development activities for a group or for individual opportunities where teachers are coming together, these are some concrete interactive activities for you to consider. So why don't we jump into the English Language Arts the Instructional Strategy Guide. And what you'll see is that in the Instructional Strategy Guide, we have a whole variety of topics that we have developed these strategies around. All of our topics, in, again, in both English and in math, directly aligned with the Common Core State Standards. So why don't we drill down on one of these topics. Uh, let's go to context clues. If you click on context clues, what you'll see is that Power Up offers an overview of this key strategy. It tells you how it relates 
to the Common Core State Standards and offer some key ideas about how teachers might use this strategy to address some of the Common Core State Standards. So if we click on that arrow now, what you'll see is the information that you need that shows you how context clues is directly related to the standards. And if we were to click on one of those uh, listings there, that would take you to directly to the site that gives much more detail on the Common Core. Let's go to the next icon, the Explore to Teach with Tech. And what you'll find there are examples of ways that you can talk about context clues and also offer specific types of context clues that a teacher might address in the classroom. So as you can see, we've got different examples, different types, uh, group words, uh, contrast, logic, offering definitions, examples of illustrations, and ways that grammatical examples can help a student understand what a context clue might look like. Then we offer specific strategies and models for how technology can be used to better understand this concept. So we talk about the use of graphic organizers, or online visual thesauruses, or visual representations of words uh, using word walls, which can help students not only understand the concept of context clues, but these are tools that allow the student to actually practice this strategy. We also talk about different different examples and different ideas that teachers can use for practice. So for example, uh, how can you use a wiki in your class or a blog to get students to understand this concept? Or ways that you can get students to use technology, whether it's a computer or a handheld device, to find context clues that can underscore how they can search for the meaning of a particular item. And then we also, in our site, offer information on ways that you can use technology for formative assessment. And uh, you'll see ideas on the site and an actual tool that helps you understand how you can create a quick quiz for your students to determine whether they've actually grasped the particular concept that you're going to be presenting. Further down, uh, we also talk about the evidence for this particular recommended practice. Uh, we've heard from a lot of people that they need to have the justification for why a particular practice such as context clues is being offered. And so what you'll find here on Power of What Works is the background information for why we are promoting these particular strategies. So here you can see, looking at the IES, the Institute for Educational Sciences, actually promotes the use of context clues and explicit vocabulary instruction in their guides and in their materials. And you can see that the evidence for this particular approach is actually quite strong. So let's go back up and see what else you can find in your instructional strategy guide. Let's now go and look at the lessons in action. What you'll find here is an example of using context clues in a classroom. And what you'll see is the story about Mr. Williams' class and how he has actually integrated this strategy and the related technology in teaching context clues to promote better literacy development and skills 
for students. You'll also see that we offer quick view technology videos related to the particular topics. So here we have several videos that relate to using this strategy. And you can see we've got a, what we call a quick view on, for example, embedding support to differentiate instruction. Uh, we all know that teachers are being asked to focus not only on a particular content area, but also to identify ways that they can differentiate instruction to meet the individ individual needs of students. So for each one of our instructional strategies in English, language arts, and math, we offer these quick videos which have been really effective in professional development settings because they capture the key ideas, they serve as a focal point for discussion, and they really allow the professional development coordinator to figure out activities that they can offer with the individuals in their professional development, either their professional development learning opportunity, the group that they're working with, or for individual teachers who are doing self-directed professional development. As you can see in this particular topic, we have a series of videos. And as more videos become available, we're always updating our materials. And then in addition, we have a whole section on professional development support materials. And we're going to be hearing more about those materials from my colleague, Kristen Riedel, uh, who's going to be talking about the different types of support materials that we have here on the site. But why don't we just click there so that you can see the different kinds of materials that we have. One of the things that I didn't mention is that uh, by next week, uh, the site that you're seeing now is going to be upgraded based on the feedback that we've gotten from our field. So many of the materials that are only available on our site as PDFs will in fact be available uh, as embedded text on the site. But what you'll find here is an example of how you can develop your professional development activities that relate to this particular area. So if you're uh, being asked to focus on issues and strategies related to literacy, you can go here to our professional development support materials, and you'll get ideas and ways that you can use Power Up to support this particular issue. So we're finding, as Kristen is writing here, that individual teachers are using our materials for their personal professional development. And also, we have professional development coordinators and facilitators who are using Power Up to plan their activities. So why don't we go back to the site, and uh, it looks like my colleague Judy Zorfis uh, is now uh, able to join us, although I don't see her name here on the left-hand side. So I think I'm just going to quickly go through here uh, and look at uh, our school-wide tech implementation before I hand it over to Kristen. Uh, one of the key areas that we focus on is this whole issue of technology implementation across a school. What are the key issues that administrators and school leaders face when they're trying to figure out how to leverage their technology dollars so that they can make wise investments? What you see here is a guide to technology implementation. And what it does is it offers really concrete step-by-step -step directions 
or ways that you can make technology work across your school. It offers tools and resources with a particular focus on school leaders, on issues related to budgeting, short-term and long-term planning, uh, things that you need to think about when you're looking at your limited technology budget and you're trying to figure out the best ways to meet all the needs of your teachers and your other support staff. We've gotten a lot of really good feedback on the implementation guide and the related professional development materials that again show you as a professional development coordinator or someone who in fact is working with a group on how best to use PowerUp to support the technology implementation that's going on in a school or in a district. As was noted earlier by Peggy in her comments, Everything that you see on Power Up What Works is research-based. Uh, we've got, we've drawn the information from a consistent uh, drilling down on what the knowledge base is, what the research says about not only how best to implement technology throughout a school and a district, but it's also based on the realities that school administrators and leaders face when trying to stretch their dollars. So I'm going to stop there because what we wanted to do is to have Kristen and Judy uh, talk about ways that you can, in fact, personalize your professional development by creating a playlist related to the resources on PowerUp. Hello, Tracy. So, I want to make sure everyone can hear me. We can hear you loud and clear, Judy, and so glad that you've joined us. Do you want to uh, move on to your playlist? I certainly do. I certainly do. Great. So I've put together a little English language arts playbook, play, playlist for myself that would help me with my own professional development. Assuming that here I am, I'm a teacher, and I am like self-paced, individualized professional development when I have some free time later at night and when I'm planning for my students. So right now on the website, I'd like to go to one of the instructional strategy guides. And Caroline is going to be driving for me. And could you open the English language arts instructional guide? That's great. And Caroline is again. I know you can. I know you can look um, before. But let's look at the reviewing instructional strategy guide. Three instructional strategy guides that for writing process. One is for pre-writing. One is for drafting. And one is for well, my students in the fifth grade have been working on um, drafting their some reports, and now we're reviewing. So um, right now, I'm going to be looking for materials that are going to help me with my instructional process. So I've been re looking over Power Up, and um, Judy, Judy, speak to the right for one moment. Hello. Hi, Judy. This is Caroline. Um, we went through the instructional strategy guide a little bit ago. You know, Caroline, I, I can't hear what you're saying. Your voice is a little muffled. Okay. Um, we went through an instructional strategy guide. I, I'm sorry, I still can't hear you. How about now? Is that better, Judy? A little better. Uh, did you have trouble hearing me? Well, we previously went through our instructional strategy guide, and we were hoping we could speak further on um, the playlist that you outlined, since we already went through the components of the instructional strategy guide. Okay, great, great. So um, I wanted to 
actually goes to, I, I think I heard what you said. Um, I wish we were in the same room. Come right up here to Boston, Caroline. <laughs> I wish you could click your heels twice and be here. Um, could we go to the Teach with Tech in the Instructional Strategy Guide? And so in the Teach with Tech, on my playlist, I would go down and I would take some of these strategies and put it on my playlist. I would make sure that I liked what we had in terms of the difference between revising and editing and using these mnemonics. So I'm going to take this section and put it on my playlist. And if you go down a little more, Caroline, I'm definitely going to use this, strategies to provide peer feedback on my playlist. Now I'm going to go down, because I browsed this before, I'm going to go down to my lesson in action. I want, I want to be able to use all the things that I saw on the Teach with Tech, but I'm going to go to the lesson in action. And I want to make sure that in the lesson in action, if you could open that up, about re editing, I'm going to go scroll down, and what I want to make sure gets on my playlist, scroll down, Caroline. down all the way. I had noticed in the what I want to make sure that I have a the teacher is right here, this checklist, the revising and the editing checklist. My kids would really find this a great value and I to be able to use this as I just read before in the peer conferencing and the teacher student conferencing. This way students could come already and they get their checklist filled out. I had noticed something else in the instructional guide, and that was the quick view of um, blog wiki. So it's making me think, how are students going to, after they publish more, can they be with their content that they've been developing? And I noticed this little video on blogs and wikis. I'm thinking, maybe the kids do blogs and wikis. So I want to make sure this is on my playlist. Could you just open the video one second? We're not going to play it, but I want to make sure that I have the right thing. And if you just hit the, the little one thing, let me see. Let's see what the title is. Am I right? Yeah, blog wikis. And it's going to be an introduction to wikis. And let's just start it out good in improving reading. Well, that's going to be important to me. And um, as you can see, these are all captioned. Yeah, put that on my playlist. Okay, I can move on now. So say, so then I'm thinking, gee, blogs and wikis get a great idea that it's not just a written uh, report that I want the students to hand in. Some of them could do blogs, some of them could do wikis, but I notice that we have this instructional strategy guide on presenting. Maybe there's some things here that could really help me think about different ways thinking about translating design into learning in my classroom. Not everyone has to just see there are other ways that students can present. Um, I'm going to scroll down and see what's here. See that this is organized exactly the same way as the reviewing. Let me start with their videos. What do they have here? Um, they also have another way to do presenting. Could you just open up the little watch our quick view videos we have there? Here's a video just on teaching students to make presentations. That's going to be really helpful. I need that on my playlist. Could you open that one moment for me so I could just check it out? Uh, good. Let's Okay, can we go one or two slides in? I'm just going to make sure that this is what I, that's going to be visible to me. Specific ideas and strategies teachers can use uh -huh, to teach skills. Effective presentations. Great. Yes, it's definitely relates to my Common Core standards. Okay, this goes up. Let me just go back now. And I found the Teach with Tech very helpful in the Let's just look at that for the presenting. Could you open the Teach with Tech? I want to see if I should be putting that on my playlist. Uh-huh. 
Yes, using digital tools. Great. Okay, let's go down a little. And this is wonderful. Very helpful. I like this. Very exemplary audio and video presentation so that kids can sample. I'm thinking maybe I could set up some station classroom. Um, compare video clips. All right, this goes on my And I'm also going to put the lesson in action because I know are so helpful. It gives me such a great vision of what instruction could look like. Uh, let's just check it out. Sensing research. So here's a nice classroom, sixth grade. Good. This is going to be relevant for me. Um, good. I the way the Common Core is set up. Okay. So I have my playlist for myself. I'm going to use materials from the Reviewing Instructional Strategy Guide to teach with tech. That lesson in action. I'm going to pick up that editing checklist. I'm going to use the quick views, blogs, and wikis. And then I'm going to also pull in materials from the presenting instructional strategy guide. I want to go back and look at that whole thing about presenting, pick up the strategies from the Teach with Tech, and I'm going to go back and really study the lesson in action. So that's what I'm doing if I'm working alone as a teacher. But I know that um, Kristen is planning a whole workshop for us on um, reviewing, on all the writing process, and presenting. So I'm wondering what she's planning on her PD playlist. So I'll turn it over to you now, Kristen. All right. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I hear you. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, well, as you said, I mean, one of the great things about Power Up is that it, it not only really supports teachers as they, um, you know, explore their individual learning and expand what they're doing in the classroom with the use of technology, but we have built out an entire section of the website to be able to support coaches and PD facilitators, lead teachers as they're working with others. And as a team, you're working towards figuring out how to um, how to teach and how to be able to bring in technology into the classroom in a new way. So we have the professional development area of the website. Thank you, Caroline. And uh, just before we get into the facilitator guide or start talking about, you know, what we might put on a playlist for our um, PD events that we would like to schedule, I just want to kind of glance down through this page really quickly. Um, if you're if you're working in a school and, and, and the first thing that you want to do is you would just want to share this resource with other teachers in the building. We have actually uploaded some PDFs um, that are some you know, just frequently asked questions or a flyer. You know, you might want to print some of these out, share them around the school. We have a quick teacher technology survey if you're in that position where you just want to take a pulse on what other teachers are doing in the in the school, how familiar they are with the use of technology, um, how much technology is being used to um, Substitute maybe pen and paper versus actually being able to redefine how education is happening in the classroom. And um, it gives a real good pulse for what kind of professional development opportunities and events teachers will be gravitating towards or um, looking towards. And um, for post training, I, we have this nice My Power Up Action Steps, which is real definable kind of concrete steps for moving forward. If you could go up to the top of the page, Caroline, I want to go ahead and open up that PD facilitator guide. And what this does is it provides a nice, um, a nice initial overview is where it starts. And um, just kind of gives me that initial context piece of how do all these pieces of this website fit together. And um, you know, how how does the blog link in with the instructional strategy guides? How could I maybe use the multiple different pieces and in what kind of capacity? Um, but if you scroll down to the ideas and um, the chart, Caroline, it um, 
we built out a nice chart because we all know that PDE is something that's offered in, in a variety of ways, whether or not that's a one-on-one -on -one setting or it's a workshop of four hours. That's, um, that's very special coveted time, I know, and um, not as often as maybe something that is a shorter workshop of two hours or what's much, much more common these days, if you scroll down a little bit more, Caroline, are team meetings and um, small group kind of uh, learning opportunities, whether or not that's small group um, coaching or that's um, a team meeting by grade level or content level. And, and what Power Up does is it allows you to be able to not only facilitate face-to-face -face opportunities, but also, um, you know, support because every, all of the learning is on the website itself, it supports a blended approach in which people can go to the website, drill down in some of the learning that is offered there, and then um, come back and unpack that learning in a face-to-face -face environment. And so as I look at this chart and think about, you know, what kind of event I might be hoping to schedule, the small group meetings are, you know, biweekly meetings. I know that's happening. And, and so these ideas, these suggested I, agenda ideas, just give a jumping off point for thinking about how you might want to drill down into some of the power up resources and the support materials that we have. So I see that a lot of times they're talking, they're referencing back to the slideshow, they're talking about the Teach with Tech worksheets. And so if we could jump back into one of those instructional strategy guides, Caroline, maybe presenting. And then scroll on down. Tracy had mentioned earlier that we have these PD support materials. The fine professional development support materials. Yeah, go ahead and click on that. And each instructional strategy guide in reading and in writing, all of them have this, um, this PDF that's associated and directly aligns to the materials that are presented in that particular instructional strategy guide. And so, for example, we start all of our instructional strategy guides with the uh, slideshow. And the support materials provide a little bit of, you know, directions for how you might want to use the overall slideshow, you know, what your goals might be, what kinds of conversations you might elicit. And if you scroll down, you'll see embedded within each of the overview slideshows, we have some discussion questions. In our work with field test sites, I have um, encountered that some people assign uh, the discussion questions as something that they um, ask teachers to do prior to a team meeting. Go in, view the slideshow, think about the questions, write down your initial ideas, and then we'll talk about them when uh, we come together. And in other situations, um, it's been viewed together in a workshop setting, and the participants have been able to unpack these discussion questions as they are um, working together in small groups and thinking about the strategies and how you can apply the strategy of presenting enhanced by the use of technology tools to really um, to meet, meet the needs of struggling learners and students with disabilities in the classroom. So after we get uh, through the discussion questions, you can scroll down and you'll find that we have, um, we have a, a worksheet to be able to use with the Teach with Tech section of the website that um, Judy had mentioned in each instructional strategy guide. We talk about applying the, the strategies and teaching um, with technology tools to be able to enhance the learning opportunities for students and take it to a new place. And what this does is it enable, if you scroll down to the chart, what we've done is we've um, built out a chart that defines the evidence-based practice and um, based off of that, considering the content area of presenting, 
we brainstormed some suggested power-up strategies of how to be able to apply this in the classroom. And, and our users, how they have then taken this and used this um, chart is then to discuss with, um, with the teachers and let's talk about the students you have in your class and how you might take these ideas, take these strategies, and further differentiate the instruction with technology that we have in the school, with options you have in the classroom and that the students are familiar with using, and how are you going to individualize that student experience and personalize that student experience so that you're really maximizing the student's learning experience. And the last piece that we offer is, Caroline, you can scroll down, is to support the lessons in action. So we have a number of lessons in action. They're great starting points for thinking about creating your own lesson related to the strategy and really weaving in different pieces of technology. And um, what we have done is to create a worksheet that can be used in a team setting, which we call the scavenger hunt. And it just, it really just hones people in to thinking about some of those key questions, those, those questions that we often ask ourselves with regards to, you know, designing a lesson, you know, how is it aligned to meet the Common Core state standards or in other states to meet the state standards? Um, you know, how could you apply one of the Teach With Tech suggested practices? Is, does this lesson use those strategies that were offered up in Teach With Tech? And, and if not, then, you know, what, what ideas do you have and, and how, how does this technology support and enhance the learning opportunities so that all the students in the classroom are really maximally accessing the uh, instruction? And so those are the three pieces of, just one second, please. Uh, so hi, Kristen. Kristen, yes, Judy. Judy, I'm thinking that um, if you would do, if you would be ELA coach, the coach in my school, and I had been doing um, my own PD using Power Up with my own playlist, and then I went to your workshop, I'm thinking about what a powerful experience it would be in collaborating with other teachers. So I would have come in already with some background knowledge, some ways of thinking. I might even have tried some of these strategies in my classroom. And then to come to um, a session that you were doing that would have um, people working collaboratively together to discuss the lesson in that, to further differentiate um, instructional strategies. This combination, this blend of activities would really be very powerful. I I'm so excited about all those things that we could do um, in power. Um, that's professional development for a group, or that's more formalized, structured, with more guidance, as opposed to what I could do on my own, just browsing materials together. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> we work in the same school. <laughs> so, you know, there was a question before from Dr. I, I think I'm seeing Dr. Thomas Ho. Um, I don't know if there was a, more of a name that was. Thomas H. I'm sorry, I can't read it, but and the question was, can playlists be shared? Tracy, I'm wondering, did you talk about all of our social media and ways in which we could use that to share the playlist that people are going to be creating on Power Up? No, go ahead and talk about that, Judy. Look, uh, Judy, uh, what we would love is for people who do create playlists to share them with us. That would be just terrific. Uh, you can send, uh, we'll have the information posted on, on our website where you can send them right there, share your power of success stories with us. That would be just terrific so that others will be able to uh, learn from ways that you all have used Power Up. So it looks like we're uh, coming near the end of our session, but let's just look at some of these questions. Uh, Peggy's asking, does our site interact with other similar sites as PBS Learning Media? Um, in fact, uh, we are hoping to establish a partnership with 
the PBS learning media so that we can be in sync and share ideas. Uh, another great question, is there a crowdsourced support community? We are just starting to build this community uh, and we'll be really focused on that starting next week when we launch the redesigned site. So we'll be working together to uh, create and share ideas among our users. And let's just see if there are some other questions. We want to make sure that we get all of them. Uh, it's always so exciting to see what people are thinking and talking about here. Uh, we're just so happy to see that Dr. Tomaso uh, is willing to help test our site. We'll be getting back to you uh, with some ways that we can work together. And also, as Kristen noted, we are exploring ideas and ways that we can get badges as part of our Power Up offer. So on that note, I'm going to stop here uh, and thank you all for participating. We're always eager to hear from you in the field and to get your ideas and to find ways that we can communicate. If you're interested in us working with you to offer another a webinar uh, for your particular school district or your school, we would be happy to do that. Uh, please feel free to contact us directly at powerup at AIR.org. And also, as you can see, uh, we're going to be hosting other webinars with the Learning Revolution uh, during EdTech Month. Also, please uh, check out our YouTube page where you can see our videos and other information. I see again uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas O asking about badges for PD. Uh, we're going to be working on that, and that's one of our goals to link up with Mozilla and to offer badges through their online support system. So again, our thanks to you and special thanks uh, to Kristen and Judy and kudos to Peggy who is uh, the, the person who you want to be leading the charge for your webinar. So again, our thanks to all of you for participating and please feel free to get back to us. Take good care. Bye-bye. Goodbye.